You're listening to a DM podcast. Hi, I'm Nigel Marsh. To celebrate the fifth year anniversary of Five of My Life, we are releasing Five from the Vault, that being five of our most requested conversations. Enjoy episode 54 with the national treasure, Julia Zamiro. Three things. So it, it, it's right. yeah. something to do, something, something to, do. to look forward to, yeah. and someone to love. And you've got the last one. I do. Because your second Dane, if I can call him that, Carsten yeah. or the second yeah. Dane, whichever you prefer. Yeah. Uh, um, to chat to me about, how can I say this without sounding trite, you know, finding love slightly later, whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and like the the stepmom thing and all that. I mean, you're, you're a bit more mature and grown up. You're not some idiotic 17-year-old, yeah. you know, with the high school boy pissed in the pub. Yeah. You, you know, you've, you're both independent, successful people. Yeah. So. Um, well, I guess for me, it's f- with Carsten is that I, I feel like really the first conversation we had, I thought I can trust you. And trust is hard. It's particularly hard if you're in the public eye too because... I don't know, people want different things from you maybe or they're not sincere. But as I got to know him, uh, he's someone who was brought up in a very simple and strong way. He has morals and he has um, uh, thing, he, he doesn't get stressed by anything. He's so calm. He's amenable. He's not threatened by a woman who, you know, has power for all, for want of a better word, you know, who has her own money and her own, and I can't even believe I have to say that in a sentence, but we full well know that um, many women can't live the lives they want because they have a partner who is somehow controlling them. And we give each other full freedom to be who we need to be and we make sure we talk regularly about how to make that better. And he has two uh, glorious sons who, when we got together, were 12 and 13. They're now 19 and 20 and at uni. And that's been a really wonderful um, time. And, you know, I, I I sometimes feel like I'm their friend rather than their stepmother. And I really, uh, I, I'm in awe of their mum and, and the job that she's done and, and that Carsten's done. They're really good men, young men. And it's just wonderful seeing them grow up. And I think you're right. I think when you're a bit older you kind of know what you want and but I guess my journey with him has been to learn how to share and learn how to be in a relationship. I I had been alone for seven years. I'd had some adventures but I'd been single and I don't know, I sometimes I think I'm too self-sufficient and no one is that self-sufficient. We all need someone. But my journey has been to how to grow closer to someone and I've had to learn and, and, and alter how I do things and and him, he sometimes, he knows how to be in a relationship. I'm sometimes saying, can you learn to be a bit on your own as well? Can you find your space by yourself? And it's good. If you can talk about it, it's good. And, I, you know, again, if you need alcohol to be able to talk all the time, you're in trouble. You've got to be able to know how to sit with someone and just go, what are we afraid of? We can't be afraid of having a conversation. The world is not going to swallow you up, which I think sometimes is what, what we think. Pretend this is the uh, therapist couch. Um, trust issues. Do you think mm. you struggle with that? This is pre yeah. Carsten. Uh, and, and where would they come from, and, and how do they manifest itself? I guess. Well, say in terms of love, I've never quite believed it when a man says something lovely about you. You know, I just always feel like it's a means to an end. So that's why I prefer being, being sex. Being sex, yeah. 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 But, uh, so I would, you know, part of me, I would rather work with someone or see someone every day through either work situation or, or whatever it might be where you get to know that person and you think, well, he's kind to people. He's not nasty to waiters. Um, he's thinking about that. He's thoughtful. And then a few weeks in you might go, I, okay, this seems like a good place to maybe ask for a date. That's That's how I work, you know. And I think that. We give trust too easily. We, we make decisions about people too quickly. Taking time to meet someone is, is, not going to, is not going to kill the vibe. And if it does, well, then get out. Get out. Um, but I think, 
I think at school I just made really close friendships a couple of times with girls, I have to say, who then totally betrayed you. And I, I, I really, I, I think I must have been a very naive kid. I mean, aren't all kids naive? But I just remember going, wow, I mean, you just really 360'd around on that. like, And I know I can be quite literal, so that is my nature to see, I believe what I see or whatever. But I think that's where the trust stuff comes from because my parents have both been, have always been quite honest with me about things, so it's not from them. I think school, they're just a couple of girls that you find yourself alone or dumped from the group and you're thinking, oh, what was that about? So I think you never take it for granted again. And I think with guys, um, yeah, sometimes I think, I mean, it's not their fault. I think they see stuff on TV and in film and think, oh, that's what you say to a girl. And it's like, actually, just be yourself and, you know, let's go for a walk. Who cares? Were you at an all-girls school? or a- Yeah, I was. I was in a, at Sydney Girls High here, a selective school, and I loved the order of it. I loved structure of school. I loved turning up. I adore wearing a uniform. I love not having to think about what to wear every day. I was not an A-grade student by any means, but I enjoyed it. I had several nice groups, but along the way, and in primary too, you make these intense friendships that then just turn on you, and that's part of growing up. It's, it's part of life. But, um, oh. God, it's gutting. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, well, I've got four kids and, and yes, gosh, you sort of live your life through them. And, and when, they're, when they're having a hard time, you go, pick me. You know, oh, pick, you know, pick yeah, me. I mean, I, yeah. I, whatever they're going through, I will gladly go through Take it. Take it. Oh, don't. And you can't because that, what, that's what builds you. So. Yeah. Hello, Five of My Life family. It's producer Mandy here. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from the episode with Julia Zamiro. We're giving you a taste of five of our most popular and surprising episodes to celebrate the fifth anniversary of this fabulous podcast with the unstoppable Nigel Marsh. So over the next five days, you can revisit these episodes and maybe even go back and listen to them in full. But as a valued member of our Five of My Life community, we have a small favour to ask. If you enjoy this podcast... Tell someone you know who likes to learn, who enjoys thinking, someone who wants to hear about the nuances of life and art and culture and the way that human stories can be deeply affecting and funny and sometimes deeply moving. Word of mouth is honestly the best way to let people know about this podcast and we'd really appreciate it. I dare say the person you recommend it to will as well. Thanks for listening and here's to another five years of Five of My Life.